In this lesson, we're going to animate our bird for flight. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring in our graphics for our bird. So I'm going to go over here to my project panel. And really quickly, let's just clean this up a little bit. I'm going to grab these two turbine illustrator files, pop those in that graphics folder, and we can put that marquee with text composition into our comps folder. Okay, so I'm just going to right click over here, go to import file, and we're going to bring this bird in. And I want to bring it in as a composition because I've set it up in such a way that the layers we want to animate are going to be on a different layer from our other layers. So they can be independent of each other for the animation. So we want to bring that in as a composition. And I'll go ahead and say open. And let's put that in our comps folder, and we'll put the bird layers into our graphics folder. Okay, so let's open up that bird file right there, this bird composition. Just going to double click that. We see that we have a layer there for the bird's body and another layer for the wing. Okay, so I want to use a trick where I'm going to animate this bird looking like its wings are flapping up and down and that it's kind of moving forwards and backwards as it's flapping. So it's kind of, um, its head maybe will sort of lean down forwards. Let's grab that body layer. So kind of get a motion like this as the wings flap. And I want to make these wings 3D layers so that we get the actual look of a wing that's outstretched towards the camera. Instead of just flapping the wing up and down like this, we're going to actually use a 3D motion. So let's reset the rotations of these. So I'm just going to select both of those, hit the R key, set those back to zero, and we'll get started with this animation. Now, I want to make this composition a little bit bigger, just in case this wing ends up kind of swinging up out the top of the composition. We have plenty of room for that. So let's go to composition settings, and we'll just bump this up a little bit more. And we can change that more if we need to later on, but this looks pretty good for now. Okay, so I'm going to grab my selection tool and maybe move the bird down just a little bit there, and then we'll grab this wing. Now let's go ahead and turn both of these layers to 3D layers. And I'm also going to continuously rasterize those vector layers. Okay, so now I'm going to take two views of this bird so that I can kind of see what it looks like once I start rotating the wing. So let's go here to two views. And this is going to be the top view that we see on this side here. So this right here, this line that we're seeing, is a representation of what the top of that bird looks like. So this top line right there, we're seeing from the very top. So we see that this is a completely paper thin layer. And if I start to rotate that layer, like on the X axis, you can see that the bird kind of looks like it's tilted backwards. And then we see what that looks like in this view as well. So Hopefully that gives you a little bit better idea of what we're working with. Now let's grab the wing layer and just isolate that for a moment. Right now, the place that my wing is rotating from is going to be kind of lower down right there. And so that is not exactly what I'm wanting. I'm wanting my wing to rotate from where it would actually attach to the bird more up there. So let's move that anchor point. I'm just going to grab the pan behind anchor point tool and kind of scoot that up there onto my wing. And we see that that still is sticking right there on that axis, so that's good for now. If I had rotated this and then tried to move it, it may have moved around in Z space, but since we haven't actually rotated that, it's still okay as it is. Okay, so let's start to kind of play with the placement of this wing. And I'm gonna watch kind of both of these windows as I start to work with this. So let's bring up the rotation. I'm just going to hit that R key. and Maybe kind of start to rotate this forward a little bit so it's kind of like what it would look like underneath the bird. Maybe somewhere right in there. And then now let's tilt this on the X axis so we kind of get a look like this. And let's turn back on that bird so we can kind of see what this looks like. 
Okay, so we're just kind of playing with this for now, getting an idea of what we want this to look like. So we need to get the first position of we want what we want our bird's wing to look like when it's down. And then we'll get another look for what it's like whenever the wing is flapped up. So we could kind of get a motion like that going. And once we get motion blur turned on, when the wing is in this stage right here where it's kind of parallel with the body, it's going to make that wing feel like it has a lot more depth because that motion blur is just kind of going to blur right out through there. And that'll make a big difference for us. Okay, so let's start with setting up our bird wing where it's in the downward most position. And right now this might look a little bit confusing, but just remember that when the wing is perfectly out to the side of the bird like this, it's going to look flat. So we want to get in the down flap mode right now. So let's kind of start just changing those values and we're just watching the wing over here to get that look right. And that's probably pretty good right in there. That looks like it's pretty far pointed down. And I kind of have a strange orientation here for my Y axis on that wing. So I'm just going to zero that back out just so it's not kind of tilting into the bird like it was. And then we can kind of turn this down a little bit. Maybe kind of push it back behind the bird, somewhere right in there. Okay, that looks pretty good for our orientation. I'm just going to grab my selection tool, kind of move that there more so it's right there where that wing would attach to our bird. Okay, so let's set our first keyframe for our orientation on that bird wing. Now let's move forward a little bit more and rotate our wing up. Okay, so we're going to want to go up somewhere right in there. And we'll just kind of continue rotating that. I think something right in there looks great. Okay, so we get this kind of flapping motion. So we see that our wing becomes parallel, then it's more visible in this window, then we flap up, and it kind of almost has the same look as it looks when it's in the down position. So that's good. That means we're keeping this pretty symmetrical. Okay, let's go ahead and duplicate this front wing and move it around to the back of the bird so that we kind of have two wings working together. So I'm just going to kind of unsolo those. They don't need to be soloed since we're looking at both of those. Then grab that wing layer and hit Control D. And now let's just go ahead and rename these so we know what we're working with. And these both have the same keyframes right now since I duplicated it. So I'm going to go ahead and rename this one front wing. And we'll rename that one back wing. Okay, so for our back wing, we're going to have a little bit of a different orientation. And it can't be exactly the same as the front wing, even if we just have the tilt a little bit more on the back side, because then the wings would obstruct each other a little bit and it really wouldn't even look like there's two different wings. And since we have this bird that's one solid color, we can kind of fake it a little bit on the symmetry so that we get a little bit more of a realistic look. Okay, so let's look at the orientation for that back wing. So I'm going to hit that and hit the R key. We'll just delete that second keyframe there. And now let's just sort of start playing with the orientation to kind of get it back over onto the other side. Okay, so now that looks pretty similar to our front wing. It's just going to be kind of tilted over there. And I'm going to open up this rotation so I know that I'm at the same spot of my other keyframe. And now let's just bring this one forward a little bit. And I'm just tilting that to kind of get it up to the other point of my other wing. So now that those look kind of similar there. And right now, as I was saying, we can't really see the two wings as well because they're obstructing each other. So we're going to have to add a little bit of variation just to change it up a bit. And one way that I can do that is just by changing this value a little bit right there. So maybe bring that backwards just a little bit so it's easier to see behind this wing. And maybe when we're on this side, we can change this backwards just a little bit right there so we can kind of see that wing behind our bird. So that gives us just a little bit more realism there. 
Okay, so now let's animate the bird itself. So I'm going to grab that bird's body and hit the R key. And then we'll just do a little bit of orientation on our bird. So with that layer selected, let's move that anchor point up just a little bit higher so it's more kind of in the middle of our bird. And then let's just kind of, with our wings up, we probably want our bird to be tilted upwards just a little bit. And then when we're down like this, we'll tilt our bird forwards so its head's kind of pushing down. So we get this sort of emotion there. And we could even key our position on that bird a little bit. So uh, again, because we don't see any real texture in the definition between the wing and the body itself, we can change that. So let's hit the P, the sh hold shift and hit the P key to bring that up. I'm going to hit the position stopwatch there and then kind of move that and maybe move the bird up just a little bit there. So we kind of get this motion. Very similar, but just maybe a little bit more realistic. Okay, so now we want for these keyframes to continue looping back and forth between the bird in the downward flap motion and the upward flap motion. And so we're going to use an expression called the loop out expression, like what we've been using before, but we're going to add the ping pong cycle to it so that it goes back and forth between the two sets of keyframes. So we're going to have to add that to all of the keyframes that we've set up so far. And if you want, you can go back to a one view camera if you like that a little bit better. Maybe you're more used to that. Okay, so let's go in here and alt click that position. And we're just going to type in loop out like we have before and then we'll do the open parentheses and we will do some apostrophes there and type in ping pong or quotation marks excuse me and then we're going to close those quotation marks and now we need to type in the number of keyframes which is two so we'll do a comma then the number two and then we'll close those parentheses and now we have the ping pong expression looping for the bird. Now we need to also loop it on our orientation. We just have it for the position. And because we are going to be using the exact same expression, I can just go in there and copy that. So I will kind of highlight that there, hit control C, and then we'll just click off to close that and then hit the alt click on that orientation and hit control V. And that's going to give us the loop for both of those values. Now let's do the same thing for the wings. And since we've already copied that, we don't need to do that again. So I'm just going to hold Alt, click the orientation, Control V, and then we'll do it for the back wing as well, Control V. And now we can do a RAM preview to see what we have for our bird animation. And that's going to continue throughout the whole cycle as long as our um, composition lasts. But this is looking a little bit slow. So let's maybe kind of move these keyframes a little bit closer together. So I'm just going to select all four of those ending keyframes and move them closer. And now let's go ahead and turn on motion blur for all of our layers as well. And then we want to switch it on for our composition. Now let's look at a RAM preview of that and see what our bird looks like. Okay, that's a little bit more realistic. And something else we can do is just select all of those keyframes and hit F9 to add the easy ease interpolation there. And that's just going to give it an even more realistic look. And those little variations are up to you. You don't have to have that if you don't want that, but I like the way that that looks a little bit better.